Good morning, live with Reverend JJ from the Anamkara Corner. And here we gather to celebrate the beginning and broadcasting live from Manor Road United. And we acknowledge the territory as we gather for worship. We honor and thank the Huron Wendat Nation, the Metis Nation of Ontario, Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, Mississaugas of Skuga Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners and traditional inhabitants of the lands of the city of Toronto, region of Hamilton, Durham region and surrounding areas, may we be connected to the heartbeat of the spirit as one. Well, good morning. Welcome to this time of the last Sunday in August. Where did it go? We've had the warmest summer, I think, on record. Uh, many things we have tried in a new direction. We will unfortunately not be going to the exhibition. Uh, I will be very saddened by that, and my husband will be very delighted. Every year we buy something, a new uh, version of snake oil that we can help uh, re reignite the economy of many places. And take note, that this Sunday is actually the 31st anniversary of, of Raymond uh, and Mei Chong, and so we'll celebrate them, do a shout out to both of them, and Raymond is continuing to heal at the Toronto Rehab, and also remember in prayers uh, Paul Harsati, Sasti, the uh, brother-in-law of, of Mei, who's in California. And uh, take note, we have a continuous stewardship of the manor, and uh, can, remember we can are collecting high hygiene products for the shelters. We uh, about, well, 12 of us delivered them yesterday at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we're continuing with that. And also take note, we have uh, next Sunday, and we're, we're beginning our Me and White Supremacy group. Uh, I'll be looking forward to studying and learning more about how we can be more connected with ourselves and with each other. I want to just advance the next slide and continue as we uh, receive books for so the this is so successful. We have a couple of backup boxes of books in the hallway outside the main office. It's quite, quite wonderful and quite inspiring. And we continue, I guess I said, with donations for the Young Eggton shelter. And uh, yeah, we're, we're exploring the idea of having some form of community meal and program. So the celebrations. And may we continue as we celebrate and worship this morning with our call to worship. Sing a song of thanksgiving. Declare God's wondrous deeds. For the Lord dwells among the people and the glory of God abides with us. Can someone unmute Cole? I think he might be muted still. So. Okay, I don't, that next slide. Mm -hmm.
God be with you. Lord Almighty God, in the self-giving love of Christ, you have revealed the path of salvation. Give us courage to deny our selfish desire and bear the cross of discipleship. Amen. Call your volume. You may need to turn up a wee bit. Well, that's better. I just heard it louder there. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Okay, let's continue. Okay, maybe we have, uh, let's t t turn off sharing and let's see um, James and Ainsley and we can uh, maybe spotlight them for a bit. Are James and Ainsley in the room? Oh, there we are. Perfect. Okay. All right, James. Turn the lights. Okay. If we could share the screen again. And may the angels of light glisten for us this day. And may the sparks of God's beauty dance in the eyes of those we love. And may the universe be on fire with presence for us this day. May the new sun's rising grace us with gratitude. Let earth's greenness shine and its waters breathe with spirit. Let heaven's winds stir the soil of our soul and fresh awakenings arise within us. Amen. Amen. And as we come before God with our prayer for confession, let us pray. Holy God, we confess that our love for you and for others has not been genuine. We have not held fast to what is good, and we have lagged in affection for our brothers and sisters. We have not been patient in suffering, nor have we preserved in pr persevered in prayer. We have repaid evil for evil and have failed to live peaceably with all. Forgive us our sin, free us from fear of the power of evil, and help us trust in the power of your everlasting goodness. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ has broken the power of sin and evil and has opened to us the way of eternal life. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. So uh, I came up with this, eat dessert, it's the best meal of the day. So it's quite wonderful as we think of what dessert is and can be. And it was a couple of weeks ago, we were driving to Port Sydney. And on the way back, there's that great place, I think it's just north of, between Bracebridge around Gravenhurst, where there's four little stops on the side of the road, the west side of the road, where you can buy wild blueberries. Now. They, they could practically be contraband when you think of what you pay for wild blueberries, but a little container is quite dear. But if you freeze them, then they stay on for a, a bit longer. And so we did. We bought a, a small carton, maybe a basket of, of wild blueberries and put them in the freezer. Now, if, you, if we could just show up at the slide notes, and we made wild blueberry crumble. And I highly recommend we gather the wonder and gift of all creation. So can you just show that slide now, too? That's our wild blueberry crumble. And yes, it looked as wonderful as, you, as the picture. And we also put ice cream, Kawartha dairy ice cream. This is a two must haves uh, in this season of summertime. When we think of the seed that is planted, the trees that grow and the gift of all the wonderful time and caring that we can reap the harvest of the wild blueberry and that we can share it at our table and realize that in this crumble, in this savory dessert that's as simple as that we can share a table and celebrate all of the abundance of the fire of god's creation amen okay can we advance the next slide okay and we say the peace of christ be with you and also with you and may we extend the peace of christ remember just to reach out on your screen and say peace of christ to everyone and the peace season. be with you and in the peace season of christ. this time of august and we're getting ready for Labor Day.
Peace be with you. Amen. Just, let me try that one more time. By the power of your spirit, O Lord, make your word become a joy to us and the delight of our hearts. Amen. There we go. There's a real amen. Okay. Good. And we have our first reader up. That's Mike. First reading is from uh, no, Exodus. Uh, 31 to 15, or 3, 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must move aside and look at this great sight. Why the bush was not turned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmaster. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land to be good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorites, the Pharisees, the Levites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians are pressing. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. For you have brought the people out of Egypt, who shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to you, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Our second reading is from the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. 
outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble at the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We hear from Matthew chapter 16. Verses 21 and 28. And it begins, from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and said, and began to rebuke him and saying, God forbid it, Lord, that this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, you are stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them desire themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what profit if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? What will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels, the glory of God, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. And truly I tell you, there are some standing there who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Hear the wisdom told us through the ages. Thanks to God. There, there's something about the text today that speaks to a story that we know and are always discovering again. 
That's what summer is about, isn't it? Let us pray. God, we look to you. So many days of summer are very familiar, yet this summer has been so different. Each of us is discovering a new way, a new normal, a new I am, a new beginning. May we hear the text anew this morning. Amen. I couldn't help but think of when we listen to the readings of the here of Moses calling and discovering of a burning bush that, that we are that fire, that we are that fire that comes and ignites the text. And we think of, and summertime is certainly a time for fires. For some, it, it's about outdoor fires and perhaps campfires or some, it's a candlelight or perhaps it's gathering in, in outdoor spaces and having those wondrous citronella candles to fend off the, the bugs or whatnot. And, or it's discovering the, the great gift of perhaps a vendor who's a, a food truck person who's selling hot dogs or some other form of wonderful delight and and that's and their fire is igniting for us and or be nighttime where we see the CN Tower light up depending on what part of the city we're in or different bridges. And we realize that in that moment in time that we are not alone. Actually last night if you looked up the night sky you would have seen Saturn and Jupiter and the moon forming a triangle and that's what is quite bright this time of year. Uh, is a great gift. When we look to the fire, though, we, we see in this story uh, that as if it was written as a great epic, and it is a great epic. It's about the time of Egypt. And when this story emerged, Egypt had already been celebrating a dynasty of over 3,000 years, as some historians estimate. And so we imagine for a moment that here we have Ain Moses, who was this, the pre story before this, was set adrift and raised in Pharaoh's house. And what would that have been like for him? And then he ran into the wilderness to find a new beginning and put aside another, his Egyptian life. And when he does this, he becomes a shepherd. Now, you have to think of a social class system for a shepherds for the you know, hunter, the nomadic people of the time. And certainly we see shepherds today, but for Egyptian shepherds were the other, the outcast, and because they were around the sheep. And so he became the other. And it, so often we hear again that God calls the other, the unlikely. And there, in that moment of time, there's that Moses climbing this mountain and experiencing that sense of light in his own life. And the angel appeared to him in a flame. And we hear in the text that says, I am. How often in the night, the darkest day, the moment of feeling alone, we look for that beacon, that light, to guide us even now. And we hear that voice to our brothers and sisters, to strangers, to friends, to companions, to living encounters, through Zoom calls, through whatever platform we have, that light, that voice, that insight, that wisdom. And yet we hear that further when we hear the words as Moses is encountering that sense of the voice of God and the flame and the angel, take off your shoes for the ground where you're standing is holy ground. You see, in that groaning and that miracle and mystery, we may ask the question, so what is holy ground? Well, for this time of pandemic, has not holy ground become our homes, the places where we've gathered for worship? We've extended the floor space of Manor Road United to increase 10 and 20 and 100 fold, to include all our living rooms or Sometimes they're bedrooms, sometimes they're kitchens, but across the great and wide neighborhood and the great circle beyond in the Kirkor and beyond even in the 905 of the great greater Toronto area. Holy ground is that moment where we set apart, discover God breaking in. And in that moment of, of encounter, there is a sense of the God of the ages meeting Moses and touching him and saying, you are called to be. And Moses, what I find again and again as you hear the story, he says, not me. He must be talking about someone else because Moses, he stuttered. And we know, if we do know people that do stutter and feel hesitant to speak in front of people, I often hear people who say, I can't talk in front of anybody, I can't speak aloud, and yet they have no problem talking quietly. Or often we hear, may hear children or young people who cannot speak uh, in front of people, yet somehow they have no problem speaking in front of friends. So often that courage to ignite, to bring our words, 
can be shut down, but this is about God igniting and saying, now is the time of birth for Moses and Miriam and Aaron. The ground of which you stand is holy ground. And we hear that further as Paul, who was a Jew and a Christian as well, who would have heard this passage and as he was reading when he was called. And he said, as he wrote to the Romans, let love be genuine. Let your love be genuine. Hear that call. And it was about the great ecclesia, the great community of the church. And when Paul wrote this letter and the early church was beginning in the first, second, third century, you have to remember, as you look at the history books, there was a, a plague in the Roman Empire in the first, second century, second and third century, and the fifth and sixth century, not unlike what we're experiencing right now. So when we think of their own shadow meeting our shadow today, let your love be genuine. And we're called to do this by looking at the term we were coining, uh, our bubble. And what is the people in our bubble and keeping our bubble. Some people use the word expanding our bubble. But keeping connected with those people so that we're reminded that, yes, this is a tool to communicate. But so often we need to meet in real time, in real place. But yet also we need to remember, and we'll here I'll show you one of my masks. This is one of my masks that I got couple of, of months ago, as the mass collection grows in public, we need to be careful and be safe. Let your love be genuine. And, then, and Christ, who brought that, is the ambassador of genuine love. He was telling the people, here we go, we need to go to Jerusalem. We need to go to the city. And so often, many of us hear that word Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is more than a physical place. It's about a spiritual reality. It's that place where we discover again who we are. And think of the big city for some as the place where you could buy great goods. Sometimes you could go gambling, go to the casino if you travel to Niagara Falls or travel to Aurelia. And I, I can't say casinos are something that I'm drawn to, but yet some people are. But don't we feel as if right now, in this moment in time, we're spinning a roulette wheel or being dealt a deck of cards and we're uncertain of what lies ahead. We feel as if we're at the mercy of uncertainty, yet we know in that moment in time, we're not alone. And yet we hear in the text the words Jesus shouts out to Peter, you are a stumbling block. You're preventing this ministry from growing by denying what I need to do. And I can't help but think of that word stumbling block. Sometimes we can encounter stumbling blocks in our own life. Sometimes we can encounter people who are stumbling blocks, who are not so much fires, but people put the fires out. There was a post on Facebook, a person I had known from, not a friend, I would really say, from grade, kindergarten to grade 13, who posted that she was, wasn't wearing a mask and was boasting about it. And I thought, it's a shame that people somehow see the mask as a conspiracy plot, that we're, they don't want to have their freedoms inhibited, but they don't realize that this is just the first time in history where people have had to don a mask and that the mask prevented the spread. So we need to stand strong and do wear what we have as a mask in public and certainly in places where people are working to keep each other safe. As Paul reminds it, love one another with mutual affection here and now. And one would, is, is wearing a mask showing love? Yes, I would say it is because you're honoring people in grocery stores, people in restaurants, People are in places of hospital. Right now, a friend of mine is at a hospital in Newmarket because he has a heart issue. And I told him a week ago he should have gone to the hospital. I didn't want to get into it. I told you so, but I did. He says, now we'll have a doctor look after him. But in that hospital, they're all wearing masks because that's what we need to do when we need to be ambassadors of love and affection. When we are that fire, when that angel appears to us in a flame, when we're standing on holy ground, when we love genuinely each other, when we go to the city, our Jerusalem, it's about losing our life to find it. Many years ago, I was uh, reading and I discovered this book again, The Heart of the Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I'm reminded in this moment on this journey that we're on right now, when we go into that heart, of darkness. Sometimes it's not about a great distance, but searching inside ourselves of our fears, of our anxieties, 
of our uncertainties as teachers and parents face and pupils and students. What do we do with school? Stay home, working. But yet my sister, she, she drives school bus in Halton for special needs children. Of course, there's a great uncertainty about what that means. How do we be safe? And we break it down to step by step, moment in time. When we hear that we look for that bright moment of miracle in our lives, the angels appearing. When we heard what happened this past week with the National Basketball Association, with the baseball, and even with the hockey and the football, where they stood their ground when a person in Wisconsin was shot in the back seven times. We need to remember that we need to take a stand and that, that sporting is doing this is a, a gift because many people listen to sporting people, sport athletes. They are the superheroes of a day for many. I personally can't throw a ball or catch one very well, but I, I support people that do and celebrate this. And when we realize that they have become the angels in the flame, that fire burning, fire burning, as Richard Rohr might, that light that we look for. And so often we think the light is so far away, yet here it is yesterday. They announced, I mean, it was Friday, in our own United Church of Canada, when many are feeling far away and distant, they appointed General Secretary Michael Blair, who's a friend of mine. Michael Blair I've known for probably over 30 years. Michael Blair, who I was on a support committee for him when he was the executive director of the Christian Resource Center in downtown Toronto. Michael Blair came to us from the Baptist tradition as a gay Jamaican because his tradition would not support his orientation and who now moved to National Church and now be the guide and leader. I said, Michael, you're going to be our Pope. We don't have a Pope, but we have people in leadership. And Michael wears dreadlocks and he brings an edgy, gifted leadership that we need here and now in all time, in all place. It's as if Michael, it's as if the community as if we hear in the text, I hear the cry of the people. And the cry is so close at hand. In Young and Eglinton, we know that there's many different opinions emerging about the shelter. Some who are terrified about what's happening in the shelter. Some who are trying to make a difference by give, bring donations to the shelter. Yesterday, we, there was 12 of us who brought the hygiene products to the shelter and I talked with Josh Matlow. We need to sit down and step back to see how we can heal, how we can bridge, how we can discover again the cry of everyone right now in this time of pandemic. Last night, there was a, a protest again in another neighborhood, Eglinton and Oakwood. We pray for that neighborhood. They were protesting the slowdown of the LRT and seven police officers were injured. We need to get on our knees and pray for all our communities as people are feeling at the edge of uncertainty of, and, and frustrated and raging and, and angry about what to do and where to go. And when we hear the text say, take up your cross and follow me, take up what we have, our courage, our hope, our indifference, that we are the fire that we are that angel in the flame, that we are the moment of standing holy ground, that we are the people brought to living our genuine love, that we are to lose our life to find it. Beyond being stranded in life, we need to find ourselves stepping one day, one moment, one second at a time. We are the fire in the flame. We are the fire of holy ground. We are that fire of genuine love. We are that fire of finding our life again here today, that fire burning fire burning, that angel in the flame, that we are the fire, the color of the world, the red, the yellow, the black, the green, the green, the white. Many years ago, I saw Disney animated film, The Prince of Egypt. If you haven't seen it, you must watch it. And so often we underplay animation. But yet in that story written a few years back, there's the song, and it tells the story of Moses in a very powerful way, portraying Miriam and everything. And there's a point where they're getting ready to leave Egypt. You know, that moment where we feel as if all hope is lost. And yet in that moment of Pharaoh's heart, hardened heart melting and that bridge opening, we heard these words, 
Many nights we prayed with no proof anyone could hear. In our hearts, a hope for a song we barely understood. Now we are not afraid, although we know there's much to fear. We were moving mountains long before we knew we could. There can be miracles when you believe. Though hope is frail, it's hard to kill. Who knows what miracles you can achieve when you believe somehow you will you will when you believe in this time of fear when prayer so often proves in vain hope seems like the summer birds too swiftly flown away yet now i'm standing here my heart so full i can't explain seeking faith and speaking words I never thought I'd say. There can be miracles when you believe. Though hope is frail, it's hard to kill. Who knows what miracles you can achieve when you believe somehow you will. You will when you believe. Now we get to hear the wonderful song of Mike Russell, Hearth. Russell. Oh, Michael emailed that to me to this week, and I thought, what a moment of serendipity and harmony when the spirit of life comes alive. And hearth is where it happens. And may we 
Well, at first I just thought that they were freckles. Very unattractive blob. Wait till the YouTube can stop. There we go. See, <laughs> we're all getting better at this one moment in time, aren't we? This is good. Okay, can we have our PowerPoint back? And Okay, here we go with our affirmation of faith. With a great diversity you've created, we come to you with both joys and sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring. For families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us, even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves. For the great diversity you have created in our world. We pray for those who suffer from discrimination because of their gender identity or sexual orientation, who worry about their employment or who cannot find a job. For those who must hide with the art to find housing. For those who are not safe in our streets. For those who do not feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia and biphobia and all forms of discrimination and hate. Show us the way to make this world a better place for all. A prayer by Ruth Wood from the worship service, speaking our truth. And may we celebrate this time of gift and gift giving. And you can again donate online or in person by mailing in, or you can actually do e-transfer. We celebrate the gifts of abundance that we all share. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Almighty God, receive these gifts that we offer with grateful hearts and use for ministry in the world. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Our, righteous our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our rear guard. In peace, let us pray to God, saying, Merciful God, hear our prayer for the Church of Jesus Christ. And merciful God, hear and bless the Church and deliver us all from evil and make it holy in every way that all people may see the light of your salvation through the witness of your faithful servants. For our pastors, for our teachers, and our ministers, for arouse the leaders of your Church to prophetic witness, especially for Michael Blair, the new General Secretary, Help us and them to proclaim your justice fearlessly, to embody your righteousness sincerely, and to practice your mercy selflessly for the world and for its leaders, for our United States to the South, our change in leadership and their election. Uphold the leaders and governments of all the places we know in Lebanon and many places that suffer at this moment in time. Give them and us your sound judgment and merciful hearts and lead them and us to do what is right and upholding the common good. For the good earth, merciful God, hear our prayer. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us and the glory of God will be our rear guard. 
Loving God, help us turn our hearts toward you. And let earth be a gentle home for us. Subdue the violence of storm as in Hurricane Laura and the earthquakes that we know, and heal the destruction of flood and drought, that life may flourish. And every creature rejoice in the goodness of creation. For children, blessed children, those who care for them, defend our children, enable them to thrive in mind and body and grow in wisdom and strength, and give them and us parents and guardians who are faithful in their duty to provide for their needs and guard them from danger. For the sick, healing especially, Raymond Chong and Paul Harasti, and those in distress, merciful God, hear our prayer. Heal those who are all sick and support all who have their need. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our rear guard. And may we pray now, as Christ taught us, our Father, in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Miracles happen every day of our lives. Just the other day, I was with a friend. We were in a storage unit. We were looking for a particular box, and we spent half an hour. We could not find it, and I did my prayer to St. Anthony. Believe it or not, I went yesterday early, and I went in the storage unit, and the box was right there with everything that I was looking for. And you'd say, so was it magic? Was it miracle? It was me calming down and noticing what's in front of us so often. We are looking for things in our own house and we can't see the forest or the trees. But sometimes when we pause and be still, we see what we are looking for. There it is, that beacon, that burning bush, that hearth of great discovery. In the name of God, Christ and Spirit, we give you thanks, God, on this day. Amen.
Well, good morning again, everyone, and can we uh, maybe turn off the spot?